Hello, I'm Ridge Bowman with NASA's Office of Inspector General. To accomplish its diverse scientific and space exploration missions, NASA relies on specialized facilities and infrastructure, unique equipment and tools, and a highly skilled civil servant and contractor workforce. These assets, collectively known as technical capabilities, are spread across NASA's 10 centers and include more than 5,000 buildings and other structures, 17,000 civil servants, and tens of thousands of contractors. Over the years, striking the right balance among these various assets has been a top management challenge, with the agency making a number of mostly unsuccessful attempts at right-sizing its technical capabilities. In light of this challenge, we assess NASA's ongoing efforts to strategically manage its technical capabilities to ensure the agency is prepared for current and future missions. In June 2012, NASA established the Technical Capabilities Assessment Team, or TCAT, to identify and assess the agency technical capabilities and make recommendations for investing in, consolidating, or eliminating capabilities based on mission requirements. To institutionalize capability management into its annual planning and budgeting processes, NASA replaced TCAT with the Capability Leadership Model, known as CLM, in 2015. Through the TCAT and CLM processes, NASA established a framework that should improve the agency's ability to manage its technical capabilities and help make the difficult decisions regarding infrastructure and personnel required to optimally position itself for current and future missions. However, after more than four years, the agency has yet to make many concrete decisions about its capabilities, for example, to consolidate or dispose of assets. Rather, most decisions have been iterative steps on the path to making actual determinations about capabilities, leaving us concerned that the agency's efforts have been slow to produce meaningful results. Moreover, NASA's assessments did not consistently include information critical to making fully informed decisions, such as facility usage data, analysis to determine gaps or overlaps, and recommendations to achieve cost savings. Nor did NASA incorporate best practices we identified from other successful right-sizing efforts, including following standardized guidance, incorporating independent analysis and cost-benefit rationales, and setting firm timeframes for completing actions. Finally, NASA continues to face the long-standing challenges of its federated governance model, uncertainty about its direction and future missions, political influence, and the lack of institutionalized processes that have hindered past agency efforts to strategically align its technical capabilities. To ensure NASA's efforts to evaluate technical capabilities are institutionalized and sustained over time, we recommended the Associate Administrator, one, create standardized guidance for performing annual capability assessments, two, evaluate CLM assessments and teams to better ensure independence, Three, develop and institute training, communications, or other measures to ensure capability assessments are complete, thorough, and include expected goals and results. And four, revise the CLM decision process to include implementation timeframes for dispositioning agreed upon actions. To read the OIG full report, please visit our website at oig.nasa.gov.